Hello everybody, Gregor Otero here, and uh, I've been holding out making this video for a while, and being the, the Mayan calendar has ended, and what I consider is free will to be king, I'm going to exercise my free will outside of fear, some people say maybe not common sense, but um, outside the realm of common sense, but the free energy movement it's really taking off. There's a lot of people publishing things, and there's a lot of inventions hitting the scenes. And so I'm going to join the bandwagon and share uh, my laboratory, my shop, my workshop, and what I'm doing here. And so um, the first thing I will show is the tower. And the tower is currently... 27 feet long. So, um, it's a uh, triple copper helix I've been talking about. It's, um, welded together with the, uh, copper silver alloy. Expensive stuff. It's probably about 28 feet. I'm gonna cut it so it's 27.2 feet. That's 10 megalithic yards. And so, the purpose of this video is, um, well, I need help, and I'd like to get as much input as possible. And the other thing, I also want to show you a little bit of the shop that I have here in Asheville, Asheville, North Carolina. I won't say specifically where, for obvious reasons. And uh, that I'm looking for blacksmith, builders, welders, machinists, builders, 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 designers. Those are like the two words, builders and designers, to come help me in this shop. And so... Here is the beautiful shop. Two containers, shipping containers, cut free. And um, fabricate on the inside. So, it's two milling machines, propane forge, there's a propane rig, um, my infamous twisting machine, the bandsaw to cut mill in the back. We have a welder, we have an air compressor, electric air compressor, um, and we're situated in the woods, sort of nice. And uh, I need help, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. So I said, I went outside with my new staff last night and slammed down the ground and cast a spell, and the spell being that um, I need builders, I need a team to. Uh, we need a team. And within a few hours, Paul Ellis, hello Paul, if you see this, so mess, uh, messaged me on Facebook saying, hey, really want to work with you. So manifestation's taking off. You know, three hour delay versus a three day delay, I like it. So I'm sending a thought out to the universe and requesting help, requesting prayers and guidance and see this project safely through. And this is one of several projects. There is the notion of the um, coils, so I'm fabricating the coils to the specifications that I want. Um, do I have one? I think I have one. Here we go. This is one of the coils, Star of David, of iron. It's magnetized. You can feel it's magnetized. Oh, man, this thing feels great. Um, as I've stated before, I've given ones that are magnetized and unmagnetized people, and they can tell which ones are magnetized. It was also with scientific equipment. I can't tell there's a magnetic field because it's completely contained. There's no leakage of the field. It's beautiful. Um, and so uh, that's a system that's a mechanical motor system. Um, it's basically theory at the moment. I'm just making some components and figuring out how to put them together. And so I want to go through this uh, Tesla tree system and see if I can get some help with it. So at the top of the tree, are going to be these guys using my aluminum uh, capacitor leaves. Um, they are one megalithic yard long. It's the, um, it's the intersection point of two circles for Vesica Pisces. And I'm going to lay copper tubing down along this and then some copper wires going out so it actually will look like a leaf and we'll follow the channel of the energy into these. I decided not to use a torus. Um, this is an easy way to fabricate it. I'm also trying to make it look artistically beautiful so it looks like a tree. 
Um, but the whole notion is biomimicry. And so the triple helix is important because the triple helix allows you to use impulse DC in the tower versus using just copper wire. Um, and so actually using geometry of the material to create channels of energy for in terms of channels for centrifugal force and centripetal force. I have a video on that explaining that. You want to look more into that. Um, I'm cutting. These are the um, these are golden diamonds. 14 of these, or 12 of these, make a rhombic dodecahedron. Um, it'd be interesting to make a do rhombic dodecahedron with these. But the notion is this is going to be a capacitor stack, and so you hook one positive, one negative, so the electrons are always moving in the same direction as they flow in. So if this is the positive, the electrons are moving out moving out, if this is the negative electrons are moving in. Um, and so uh, I'm using epoxy, I'm using West Systems epoxy. Um, I'm also just going to throw this out there for people who use epoxy. This is like the best type of epoxy you can get, West Systems. Use it for like boats and things as such. And uh, hold on one second. Hey, just to let you know, this is private property. Sorry, I couldn't hear what? I was just letting you know this is private property. Okay, I'm sorry. I it's, didn't see the sign there. it's okay, yeah, we don't have a sign up. It's our bad. Alright, no worries. See ya. So, um, yeah, someone jogging through the property. It's private property, so I have to make a statement. Um, we don't have a no trespassing sign up. And people come in through the woods sometimes um, on a trail. So, you gotta get that no trespassing sign up. So there's a lot of interesting materials throughout this property. Um, luckily, it's gated and everything. So, uh, what next? Oh, so the epoxy. What's great about this epoxy? Epoxy has a high dielectric breakdown. I think a millimeter is about forty to fifty thousand volts. Um, it's pretty fucking awesome. And then there's this stuff, synthetic magnetite. I um, can't remember what the particle size is on it. It's really small. Anyways, you mix 30% magnetite, 70% epoxy, you have a really beautiful composite because the capacitance value for epoxy is about, I think, about 3K. I think K is the number you use, even though that's also with Kelvin. Um, and magnetite's 14.4. So it can hold, support a much stronger electric field as a dielectric. However, it has a much weaker, you know, volt, uh, dielectric breakdown than epoxy. Put the two together, you have a composite um, that has electric and magnetic properties. And so there's a, uh, do I read a lot of research papers, and I came across that composite material. It's a really interesting paper. And so um, the electric fields can support are much, much stronger than either of them by themselves. And so I'm going to be using that as my insulator for uh, these guys right here. Um, and so basically, you know, every opposing plate, one positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, and they'll be insulated together. I'm working on that right now and hopefully get to do all the epoxy before it starts getting colder. It's about 60 here right now. Should be not getting below 45 in the day, so just at the range. I'm not planning on doing the magnetite insulator on this. And so these are questions I want to ask about Tesla's patents. And so Tesla has all of these patents of different aspects of a system. Um, one's a radiant energy. One is um, his, his cones. Others are his Tesla coils, which run on AC, um, when really want to run on impulse D DC. The notion is how you take these patents together and put them together to create a unified system. And so I'm also implementing some of the vortex math I'm working on to this system. And uh, Tesla would s would mounted at the top of a tower aluminum. And with the aluminum, um, he said it needed to be a clear insulator. And so if you also think about trees, trees are somewhat translucent, um, the leaves are. And so they allow light to come through them. And, but the tree itself, the bark, is solid. It's not translucent. And so I was planning on making 
the trunk of the tower with the magnetite. Um, it's also an insulator. And so this tree right here, if I took a, uh, if I took a, um, a copper nail nailed into the tree, the tree would be dead in a year. It creates an energy drain in the system. And so it's the same notion that Tesla was saying the towers need to be insulated. Um, and so the leaves, though, are translucent. And so I was playing on just epoxying the capacitor plates, the aluminum capacitor plates at the top of the tree, while everything else would be uh, the actual whole tower I'd be doing with the magnetite in Slayer 2, and filling the tubes with distilled water. Um, and the distilled water helps support the um, electric polarization that takes place in the triple helix. And so the triple helix is a capacitor inductor. It has inductance, it creates an inductance through the, you know, the twisting of the metal, but at the same time, you create opposing, you create pressurized forms of the electric flow in that helix. So the parts will be positively charged and the parts will be negatively charged. Compression and expansion within that flow. And so, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the diagram I've made. So this is a simple diagram. I just made this up. Um, there's definitely going to be more to this system. And so we have the tower here. Okay. And at the top of the tower, you got the aluminum leaves. And there's going to be the copper undersiding um, that once supports them structurally, but at the same time provides channels so the energy can move out into the capacitive leaves. At the top, there's uh, two ideas. In this, I have a brass flagpole top, which I can get in town for $40. And it's an aluminum sphere that's brass coated. Um, I can put that at the top of the tower, or I can put, um, I can taper the copper, like I did my last staff that I just posted, um, and have the uh, copper get smaller and smaller and twist um, and come to a point, which if you think like an obelisk. So there's the obelisk in New York City, which has had this record breaking three inches of snow in October. Um, Cleopatra's Neal behind the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's, six, it's exactly 68 feet tall. What's interesting is 68 feet tall exactly is also exactly 25 megalithic yards. And so uh, the notion is the tip of that tower goes to 25 megalithic yards. So does the tip of this tower should be that be 27.2 megalithic yards. And the idea with the megalithic yards is if people can fill in, give me more insight into this, I'm using intuition and picking up from the ancients, is that it's a base wavelength. It's a base wavelength that many uh, megalithic structures on a planet are built to. The qu so one of the things I have is about the wavelength of the ionosphere. So let's explain how this tower works in the simplest sense. The Earth is negatively charged. And so I have this in how trees dance with Guy. And so I, that video explains this concept. Um, and, but I'm going to reiterate this concept. The ground is slightly negative, um, if not neutral. And there's, there's parts on the planet that are also positively charged. But let's say, for the most part, it's slightly negative. Um, and the ionosphere up above us is positively charged. And so you have a differential in this electric field, and it's a vertical axis, a vertical oscillation. Um, it's an oscillation because there's lightning strikes. There's lightning strikes on the planet at all times. Now there's the skewman resonance, which is about 7.8 hertz, but there's all this cherry chair on the internet with the Russians that is actually up to 12 hertz. And there's also the... Uh, notion of lightning strikes creating a frequency which I've seen anywhere from 300 to 500,000 hertz. And wherever there's a lightning strike, there's a discharge of electrons up to the ionosphere. Electrons meeting with protons, ionized hydrogen, which are constantly being recharged by the solar winds. There's pr pure protons being sent from the sun to the earth and bombarding the ionosphere recharging it. So this is a perpetual cycle. It happens 24-7 all the time. And so uh the question is, we have, we have two different frequencies. The skewman resonance, which relates to the electromagnetic cavity um, of our atmosphere, and then there's also the discharge from 
the lightning strikes. All of these fluctuate is the big thing. So is there any consistency in the wavelength? Also, in terms of hollow earth theory, um, which I'm a big proponent of, and the notion that the earth grows, which also has become a scientific fact. Some will still argue it. I think it's a scientific fact. It makes perfect sense. Everything grows in our reality. Is Technically, our atmosphere is expanding, so is the wavelength expanding. So what is the wavelength of what the tower should be? And Tesla talks about a quarter wavelength to use with um, with a, a Tesla transformer. And so the only constant I've seen, so we're seeing, there's all this fluctuation with wavelengths, the only constant I've seen is the megalithic yard. And it's the closest thing I've been able to say, all right, that makes sense. Um, and I had my own synchronicities with Cleopatra's needle and seeing it in person and... Um, it's sort of the way the universe is sending me right now. So insight into that would be helpful. Um, and so let's get back to this tower. So this tower tunes into this vertical oscillation. All right? And if the ionosphere is positively charged, this is going to retain more of a negative charge at the top. While the bottom is going to change a positive charge. And so let's... Um, this is your copper triple helix tower, and it's connected to a tuning circuit. Now, this is the stack I'm I was just talking about. And the stack is going to have 12 plates. The 12 plates I can also disconnect, so it's a larger scale tuning circuit. I can tune this capacitor by disconnecting and reconnecting uh, capacitive plates to the system. But then there's also a fine tuner, um, which consists of one tube inside another tube. And I'm thinking a aluminum tube inside a copper tube or a solid aluminum bar inside a copper tube. Um, people can give me insight onto how they feel about that too. That's something I'm throwing out there and insulate it with the magnetite epoxy on say if it's the aluminum rod on the inside um, and smoothing it out so it can, you can just easily slide it in and out of the tube to tune it. You can also do two different, st two different size uh, tubes so you have a really small one where you can fine tune it and a larger one to tune it. So I could almost have three levels of tuning the capacitor. However, there's a the notion of tuning the base capacitor. You don't tune the top capacitor. So there's a differential in the capacitance. And so that's the notion is, can you really tune the tower with just a capacitor? You really need to tune it with the inductors because the inductor, there's a set inductor for the tower I'm doing. Um, and so another notion is the number of wraps is really... So here's some failed, whew, some failed uh, twists. And so if we have this uh, triple helix, and so this piece, let's say it's it's like four feet long. We'll say it's four feet long. Now the wavelength isn't necessarily four feet long, or do I actually have to follow, just like you would with wire, the outer point of this tube going around? Would that be my wavelength? So that's a question for other physics junkies out there who can help me with that. Because um, I think it would be the outside wavelength. It would be the path. Um, so it almost, I won't say it negates the 27.2, but something, another thing to throw on the table. Um, and so we have the tuning circuit, um, and there's a carbon spark gap. Um, and so... That's something, uh, so yeah, there's that base, it's just basic Tesla coil set up there connected to a ground rod. Um, and so then you have a primary. I'll show you guys what I'm using for primary. The um, question is, will it be able to handle the amperage? I have soft copper tubing. Um, this is 3 8 20 feet, um, half inch inner diameter. Um, and so. I had three eights before. I remember I turned it because I really wanted the half inch, and the tubes on the tower are half inch. Um, but we're also going to be stepping down the voltage. We're going to be getting a lot more amperage. Um, and so I'm even thinking of doing three primaries at the base to balance out the triple helix. Um, it'd be a more efficient coupling. Um, and I really want current. I don't want voltage. And so if the tower is 27.2 feet, every foot is about um, 30 volts. And so uh, 30 times 27, I'm looking at like 900 volts with this tower. Um, however, the triple helix uh, could 
throw a mix into a lot of different things um, in terms of how this actually um, builds up voltage. And so we're creating a standing electrical standing wave in this tower. Um, it's the simplest thing, it's just like a swing. I'm building a swing. And I just, there's something that is constantly tapping the swing, and you just gotta get the tap at the right moment to keep that swing moving. And then essentially you can have a gear at the top of the swing that is pulling that energy out of, of the swing, which is where the primary couples. You could almost say this is the primary, this is the secondary, We're running the Tesla coil in reverse. Um, and then the primary, there's gonna be a capacitor, which the question is do I need to do a tuning circuit like this with with the primary? Because I can also, a simple way to tune the primary, um, as uh, people have done before, is where you actually make the connection on the copper coil. Um, you can slide the connection so you can tune the inductor. Um, and so the capacitor, I might have to do the tuning capacitor circuit, something else I'm asking about. This right here is a, uh, well, I use the resistor symbol. Um, to test this to make sure it all works before I do the whole inverter phase, which um, involves taking, uh, putting it into a capacitor, because I'm using the primary, the primary is just a single copper coil, I'll get AC. It'll convert impulse DC to AC. Um, and so if I did a triple helix primary coil, which I could do, um, and I'll probably do eventually, um, it would convert it to impulse DC. The idea is to maintain the impulse DC throughout the whole system. You have to use that type of wiring. You have to use helixes. If you don't use helixes, it gets converted to AC. And so, um, the, uh, so what I was going to do with the AC is the AC I can use to create heat. And AC, um, you're just saying you're having a collision of the energy. Um, the energy is moving in the same pathways instead of opposing pathways. So the helixes allow you to polarize the pathways. And so uh, I was going to make a, uh, a double helix um, steel coil um, that the double helixes aren't touching each other and set up as a scalar coil. Um, and so you can dump all the AC current into this coil um, to thus, you know, create heat, create, um, uh, to create a simple, um, heating element. Um, and it's an easy way to demonstrate the tower is working. I can just dump all the current into it before I say convert it into DC and put it into capacitors to store it, then put it through a 60 Hertz oscillator and then a transformer to put it at 120 volts with a voltage regulator. So you can then put it into a house. A notion with this system is you could utilize two forms of electricity. You could convert it to the standard household electricity, but you could also then use it to power lights and heat and he heat things with the natural um, earth frequency, which then means you're radiating heat and your light bulbs, your light bulbs are all pulsing, your heating elements are all pulsing at the earth's natural frequency. And so this tower, you can also put it on the grid system. You can put it on uh, the ley lines, specifically, specifically where two ley lines meet up, you can help support the ley line system. You create more flow. This all relates to the video, um, How Trees Dance with Gaia, that I made, and how you can actually support the flow of the planet. And so these towers, in essence, can become part of temple complexes, places that uh, produce, it's, it's your source of creativity, it's where energy is made, the heart of the energy. And so instead of, you know, putting our nuclear power plants and our coal plants off in the distance and, and knowing how much waste they create, we actually praise and honor our, our places uh, where energy is created to where if you make these energetic complexes, you could actually go in and meditate in the complex and help support the flow of energy and create more energy for the grid. It's a whole symbiosis in terms of how this all works. And so uh, there, there are some ideas... I threw out there what I might be missing in the system. I have no interest in doing circuitry. Um, I'm trying to figure out a grassroots approach for this. Um, the hardest part is we have a custom made machine to twist Mel and the helixes. So eventually you could do this without the helixes or the helixes could be sold and manufactured. But I'm trying to figure out a process that is one of the simplest ways to create energy that is beneficial for the environment. Um, and you can then run the towers in reverse. This is the big thing. 
Um, I have a Variac transformer. I have access to a two kilo, two kilovolt Variac transformer um, uh, that can go up to 18 amps. And so I can put a second stage transformer into this and run the tower in reverse. So you actually can use the tower to build up your capacitor banks um, you're in the second stage, not the first stage. The first stage is just to tune the tower. The second stage, you, that's what you store um, in, the, uh, in, the, uh, um, in the capacitor banks. And really, the big, if I was making a second stage tower, I want really big capacitor banks. And so I'd probably be getting like two-inch tubes and putting one, in, in, putting one tube inside the other and burying them underground. Um, which also helps support the charge. If you make the outer wall positive, the ground will electrons will form on the outside, and you actually can make a very symbiotic um, system um, by burying the capacitors in the ground. And so, charge up the capacitor banks, and then you can run the tower in reverse. And so it's like receive energy, send energy, receive energy, send energy, and um, essentially the towers could. <laughs> You just, it's like the ionospheres only need to kickstart, and then once we're even kickstarted, you don't even need the ionosphere to sustain them if they're set up correctly with accessing zero point energy. That's what the triple helix does. You almost say the ionosphere is just to help get things going, but the triple helix itself can maintain the flow of energy in terms of how it accesses the zero point, which is in other videos I recently did. And so, um, if you run the tower in reverse, it's like Dune where um, they have the thumpers and the you, and every time you run the tower in reverse you slam the ground and you increase the, the electrostatic pressure in the area. There's always electrostatic pressure in the ground and there's different currents moving around. Um, there's a guy in uh, one of the Balkan countries, I can't remember, something with a trapeze something, his device. And it's used by um, putting two different ground rods like 50 feet away from each other or something and having a, a device that's sort of like a Tesla coil system, but it picks up the ground currents and it creates a flow of ground currents uh, to, to power itself. And so there's electrical ground currents everywhere on this property in small amounts, and you can tap into them too. That's also what the ley lines do. But with these towers, you can increase the ground currents everywhere in the area um, by like a thousand fold. And the thing is, people are like, well, can this be dangerous? Well, guess what the frequency is? The frequency is the frequency of the Earth. It's Gaia's frequency. You're just increasing the pranic flow of everything in the area. And so if you just increase this pranic flow, let's say your house, like five miles away, you take a little antenna, you take a ground rod, and you basically take a beefed up radio, a resonant tuning circuit, to tune in to the tower, just like I, just it's the same system I showed you, but you can do it much smaller, because the differential between the ground and the sky is much greater, because this main tower is supporting um, all these other mini towers. The mini towers themselves are still creating their own power, creating their own oscillation, but because the ground currents are so much greater, you don't need a big enough tower to make um, the power itself. It's like essentially you're creating one big gear that allows you to make all these little small gears um, to all create power in the system. So it can become a perpetual process to where one person or a town builds this one big tower and then everyone else can make their own little home towers to power their homes. Um, and it's it's a beautiful system. It's a beautiful idea. Tesla was spot on. And some people in the free energy movement think, oh, this is too big, this is too bulky, but this has so much benefits for the environment. Um, you can actually design the towers to... I'm at 28 minutes. Well, you actually can design the towers to uh, grow water. And so uh, through, through proper research and development, this is all stuff that I know is possible. It's just I need personnel. I need more funding. I have some funding. I need more. I need, I need people. I, I need other visionaries who, know how, who have integrity th with their words and putting things into manifestation. Um, and this is all possible. We can grow water. We can grow gold. We can grow all of these things. If we really just put our minds to it or I could say our manifestation, because it's all there. It's all, it all makes sense to me. But getting it into this reality is the trick.
So the first step is this tower. This tower is going to be, be the, the kickoff. And there's lots of other beautiful things that can come forth from it. And so, I <sighs> can't think of anything else I need to share. I feel like I shared a lot. I have questions. People, if you can give me answers, thank you. Thank you. I need some answers. I need help. I need support. Um, and uh, I think some beautiful things are about to happen on this planet. Some really beautiful things. And the mind calendar has ended. The music has stopped playing. It's time for you to pick up your instrument, start playing the music you want to play. And I want to manifest. I want to co-create. So if you can help me, and really it's not me, it's us. Getting to like, can you help us? Us change this world. There's so many people working in permaculture, sustainability, but the core of that is energy. Manifesting energy. And as soon as we can get the energy down, the whole process becomes perpetual. People talk about perpetual motion. Well, the perpetual motion is even just a metaphor for the whole structure of our society. If you nail down the perpetual motion machine, we have a perpetual motion society. It all becomes kinetic. It all starts taking off. We can start supporting all these holistic projects that really aren't businesses and that really can't support themselves but have great benefits for the community, a.k.a. nonprofits. We need this stuff. So I'm here, and I want it to be us. I want it to be we. And I've come a long ways, and... It's about to get really, really beautiful. So, ciao, adios. You guys have a good one. Bye.